The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Hello there everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome to my out-of-the-box kit review of the Trumpeter 1200 scale RMS Titanic. I hope you enjoyed the little intro there. That's the actual sound of the real Titanic whistles. They were uh, blown again for the first time in 1999 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So at that time it was 87 years since the world had heard the voice of the Titanic. And we thought we'd throw that little piece in there for you guys to enjoy. But today we're going to review this kit completely out of the box. Uh, it's a highly anticipated kit. It just arrived in my shop yesterday. And I'm really, really glad to have this kit. It's kind of a pricey kit, as you guys will discover, if you don't already know, if you look it up. Um, it's kind of pricey, but I've been saving my money up for it for quite a while. And uh, I did the uh, pre-order, so I saved a couple hundred dollars on the kit through Mega Hobby. Uh, this kit is already being bought up like crazy. I'm hearing reports from all over the Internet that the, uh, they are basically selling out pretty fast. So if you want one of these, you guys might want to grab one while you can. No word on whether there'll be a reissue or not. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take a complete out-of-the-box kit review on this. I'll pop all the individual boxes out of the kit, show you the parts. We'll take the sprues out of the bags and look at all the uh, detail up close. And we'll talk a little bit about what my build plan is for this going forward. Also, there's a uh, they've already announced a supplemental parts upgrade for this kit that's coming out at the end of February. There's information about that on a flyer packed inside the kit here, and we'll show you that and talk about that a little bit. So here we go, guys. It's time to head over to the bench and un unpack this huge model and take a look at all the wonderful detail. This is by far the most awesome uh, model kit of the Titanic that's ever been released. So if you're a Titanic nut like I am, this kit's really going to be for you. We'll be right back and uh, take a look at what's inside the box. Okay, everybody. Well, before we actually open up the box, I thought I would show you the box art before we get that far and the uh, artwork that's on the side panels here. You can see these are photographs of the actual model. The first shot here shows an overall picture of the model so you can see some of the detail and the actual size of the kit. It's about 53 inches long, just a little, you know, a little shy of five feet, so it's pretty huge. Um, you can see the LED lighting featured here as well which uh, interestingly is mostly on the superstructure of the ship, the upper levels. And so we're going to have to do some work to light the lower section. I did note that the, uh, that the hull does not have the portholes pre-drilled. So we're going to have to do a lot of porthole drilling. But I'm used to that. I've done a few of these uh, ship models and had to do that in the past. So no problem there. Um, the holes are scribed into the model, so you have a nice guide to start with. So we'll address that as we get uh, you know, farther on down with this build. Uh, moving along here, we see more detail of the bow section, the midsection, the bridge area, one of the smokestacks. Uh, this kind of features some of the detail of the actual photo etch set that's included. I think there's seven sheets initially in the kit, with some additional sheets available in the parts upgrade kit that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And here's a really nice shot, probably the coolest shot on the side here of the, uh, you know, the smokestack and boat deck area of the Titanic. And it's just really, really gorgeous. It looks to be uh, fairly accurate. You can see more detail here at the stern. And uh, the boat, uh, the lifeboat area, and then a little bit here around the grand staircase. So I'll pause the camera real quick here and flip the, flip the box around and we'll take a look at the other side. So on the opposite side box paneling, we have these schematic type pictures of the Titanic itself. These are just to kind of give you a general overview of what the ship should look like, color-wise and everything. Uh, there are some much more specific color callouts for the paints used, uh, included in the instructions, and we'll see those here in just a little bit. But uh, a lot of research went into this model, 
uh, the company was actually going to release this kit, you know, as I mentioned about a year ago, and then they went, you know, they went online basically and worked with a lot of the historical experts out there and uh, took feedback on the model and uh, made some corrections. I'm not sure what any of those corrections were, uh, and it's been noted that some people have said that there's still some uh, minor inaccuracies on the kit, but uh, overall the consensus seems to be that this is the most accurate uh, model of the Titanic that's ever been produced. We'll just have to see about that. I'm not going to worry too much about all that stuff. Um, I'll try to correct anything that's, you know, glaringly obvious and things like that, but uh, I'm not, you know, enough of an expert on the Titanic to get down to every tiny little thing. But uh, I think some of those uh, things may yet still be addressed with the uh, additional parts pack that's going to come out for this at the end of this month. And uh, we'll just have to kind of see what all is involved with that as well. But uh, moving on here, we have some pictures of the uh, photo etch sheets and the decal sheet for the model, which seems to be fairly uh, complete. Just about everything you need there for that. Here we have some history of the Titanic written in both English and Chinese. And then over here at the last panel we have some product information. So that's pretty much it for the outside of the box. I really think I'm going to hang on to this box too because this box is really cool. I have the, uh, you know, I have built a couple of the uh, 1350 scale space uh, battleship Yamato kits and the box that came with that was, uh, this really reminds me of that. It's really cool. Everything's packed in individual boxes. Uh, really nice and professionally and uh, the artwork on the box is outstanding so I'll probably hang on to this even though it's huge. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I have to put it up in the rafters or something but uh, definitely want to hang on to it. Kind of wish they would have gave you a nice art print of this uh, cover art here on the top. It's a beautiful painting uh, but maybe you can purchase that separately somewhere or something like that. I'll have to look into that. I think it's pretty nice. But uh, So there you go guys. We're going to go ahead and move along now and actually open the lid on this huge thing and see what's inside. I'll be right back with that. Okay, everybody, we're well, starting off on the far left here. We're going to open up this first box. I have no idea what's in here uh, as far as the grouping of parts, but we'll find out. These lids fit really, really tight as I'm finding out here. Okay, we'll have a look. Okay, looks like in here we've got uh, our smokestacks. Uh, I'll just kind of show you these in the bags first. We'll, uh, when we get towards the end of the video here, I'll pop these out of the bags and we'll have an up-close, detailed slideshow picture of each of these uh, individual parts so you can get a good idea. There's some nice rivet detail on these, which I'm really happy to see. I was kind of worried if they were going to have that on there or not. Uh, everything, as you know, on the Titanic was assembled by rivets. Welding was a uh, kind of a new frontier that they were exploring at that time. They were just starting to use that on a very limited basis. Welding would prove to be much stronger in ship design later on. Uh, but uh, the original Titanic was built with rivets. Probably a couple million of them. Here we see some uh, boat decks with the uh, nicely done window openings, which I'm glad to see those are already opened up for us. That would be a ton of work if we had to do all of that. Uh, we've got, looks like the poop deck here. That'd be the stern of the ship for you non-nautical types out there. Um, uh, this is where the third class passengers would have their promenade area where they would be able to kind of wander around outside of the ship as we know on the Titanic and you know each area of the ship was strictly restricted by class which is no longer a thing today thankfully. Uh, here we have the foredeck or forepeak area. You can see the area where the forward mast mounts on there. Again don't worry too much about this right now. We're going to look at these much more closely in just a little bit here. More smokestacks. More boat deck. Some more upper cabin area and wow these are <laughs> It's just so cool to see these at this scale. I've had so many Titanic models and, uh, you know, used to looking at everything in really miniature detail, and this is really cool. You can see all the, you know, fine detail on there, right down to the, the these really kind of cool looking little brass um, lights, you know, mounted on the walls of the upper boat deck. Uh, very nautical looking and, you know, very period, and uh, those are all in detail there. Here we have our sheets of photo etch, which... Let's see, we've got four sets. I guess I was wrong about the seven. Uh, but we have four sets of photo etch. Handrails, rat lines. Uh, here you can see the compass platform. Uh, stairwells. Um, overhang areas for some of the boat deck. Grill work. Um, just, you know, things like that. More handrails. And a lot of vent detail. More stairwells. So, as I said, uh, 
this looks to be very high quality, very thick material. I like the thicker type photo etch. Um, so we'll we'll have to see what's what else is included with photo etch on the addi additional set. And we'll go over that when we get it more uh, boat deck detail. Here you can see some of the deck work now. For those of you curious about it, if you don't want to do the wooden decks, the planking detail on this is really well done. It's really crisp. It's um, it looks to be nicely in scale and then it's just kind of up to you to do your own paint work on that and bring out the realism on that. I've seen some people out there that can do really, really nice deck work using paint and get that kind of simulated, uh, you know, streaking and everything and the individual plank colors and all that. But we're going to go with the wooden decks, the aftermarket set when that comes out. Uh, here are the masts tucked inside these, uh, you know, this nice little bit of styrofoam. I'm really glad that Trumpeter, you know, went the extra mile that you can see they've kind of protected everything here which is a really nice little touch. Trumpeter has really upped their game. Trumpeter in the past had been known for, you know, not so great a quality of models. And uh, they have really, really upped their game. And it's nice to see uh, uh, one of the kits that they released this year was a World War II uh, 124 scale Hellcat fighter plane. And it's the uh, aircraft guys out there are just raving about that kit. You know, it's a really, really wonderful kit. Uh, rumor on that is that they're going to release a 124 scale Corsair, which I'd be all over that if they uh, if they get around to releasing that one. So let's put the lid back on this box and move on to the next one. Uh, again, I'm going to go at the end here and pop all these out of the bags, lay them out on the table here, and do a slideshow so you guys can see these and study these parts a little bit closer at your own leisure. Um, but for now, this is just a general overview. Man, these boxes... They are made to fit tight. I wanted you to work to open these up. Okay, so let's move on to this big one here in the middle. Hopefully I don't have too hard of a time getting it open. And, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put a little, ease that tension on that flap there a little bit. There we go, that made that easier. Okay, so we have a big foam insert here. Uh, this is part of the I can kind of look inside here and tell this is part of the stand itself. It does come with a really nice display stand. Uh, here is the main ventilation uh, doors for above the engine room on the upper boat deck, it looks like. More of the uh, cabin work area there. This is kind of the, this is the base itself with the uh, Titanic name embossed on the front of that. Uh, have the trumpeter logo on there, which we, I think I could have done without that, but uh, that could always be sanded off and removed. I might go ahead and do that. But we have the Queen of the Ocean, Titanic, 1-200 scale. So that's pretty cool. And I really like the uh, font that they use for that. That could be done up really nice to look like iron or something. It'd be pretty cool. So there's the base. And here we have some of the uh, upper superstructure detail on the sides of the hull. Nicely done here along these windows. You can see that the mixture of windows on the Titanic was pretty unique. You know, it had a, it had a, you know, multitude of combination of window shapes. You know, you had kind of squares, elongated uh, rectangles, standard rectangles. You can see here, different size round, uh, you know, portholes and things like that. But they're very, 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 very well done. And there are some minute rivet details on there, which is nice to see. That seems to be missing on a lot of the uh, smaller scale. Titanic kits. Here another huge section of the uh, boat deck all in one piece, the boat deck cabin work. Uh, this might be part of the officers quarters and things like that I think. Now these are the, the main cabins. The officers cabins were a little bit farther forward. So that's really nicely done. Here we have the uh, propeller wings, the wing mounts on the hull, the rudder, some more uh, upper cabin work, some hatch covers for the cargo hatches. Uh, we have some of the lifeboat davits there uh, and our propellers. Now interesting on the propellers here uh, for those of you who follow along with you know all the latest developments about the Titanic that's been kind of revealed over the years after they've dove on it several times and they've gone in and dug up a lot of the original records from Harlan and Wolf, the people that built the ship, we see here that we have an option of a three-bladed center screw which was driven by a turbine on the ship not directly driven from the main steam engines uh, and this propeller could only operate in forward it couldn't reverse but there's some controversy out there about some new information that was uncovered that possibly the Titanic had a three-bladed center screw 
Uh, and it's kind of cool that they actually took that into account here and gave you the option for that. Of course, we have the standard uh, kind of, you know, four-bladed screw that everyone thinks is there. Uh, I will point out that all the pictures that you see online of the uh, Titanic's propellers are all uh, pictures of the uh, propellers from either the uh, Olympic or the Britannic. As far as anyone knows, no photos were ever taken of the Titanic's actual screws. Uh, that's kind of debatable, you know. I don't know how you could really tell them apart when you were looking at some of these pictures unless the pictures were labeled. It is possible that some of those pictures are of Titanic, but no one could say for certain. Everything in the background looks exactly the same. The lower hulls on the ships were absolutely identical, so there's no way to tell. Some of the experts may be able to tell by some of the, um, uh, you know, the way the, the hull plating is, is, is attached to the ship. There, there may have been some subtle differences, and that's what tells them apart but again I'm not enough of an expert to go into all that but it is cool that um, they gave you that option uh, there's kind of rumor out there that in the future when they dive on the Titanic they may take a under you know an underground radar type unit and try to see through the mud and see if they can actually see what the uh, blade looks like you know what the propeller looks like the, the actual one on the Titanic is buried in the mud unfortunately can't see it here we have the uh, the bilge keels here uh, these are the, the kind of long strips that ran along the center on each side of the uh, hull amidships that's the center part of the ship to kind of help stabilize it which is a nice detail and I always like the fact that they on a model kit if they include that separately because when you glue it on separately it looks like a separate part which it actually was it was an actual separate piece that attached to the ship instead of being molded on and then here finally we have the uh, decal set which we'll look at that a little closer in just a little bit. So let me throw this all back in the box and we'll move on to the next one. Hopefully we don't have a problem getting it all back in there. This one can go down below. Okay, I think that's everything there. We'll move along to our next box. Probably more deck detail. Okay, so we see this first sprue here. Yes, this is a whole bunch of uh, small little stuff. Uh, it looks like the, the uh, parts for the lifeboats, a bunch of the winches and cranes, uh, ballards and tie-down brackets for the hull, a bunch of tiny little stuff there more of the uh, boat deck here you can see up here on the sides you know getting up close to towards the bridge that iconic kind of neat little wedge shape that they had there gave that gave the titanic a really unique look more cabin area detail the walls uh, here's the forward part of the bridge which is beautiful one of my favorite parts of the titanic that you can see there really cool to see it at that size the more I, the older I get, guys, as a model builder, I'm more of a fan of building big models because I can see them a whole lot better. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going through the same thing. But uh, here we have a lot more of the detail. Ventilator tubes, looks like uh, cargo crane parts, the inner caps for the uh, smokestacks, uh, some, some other things like that. This is basically a repeat of the same sprue. And here is some of the uh, bridge detail, or the uh, deck detail some vent details here molded in kind of hard to see all that with the plastic on it but not to worry we'll get you a better look at that same thing going on here you can see the um, embossed 1 200 scale titanic and the part number there that'll all be covered up during the assembly and finally we have one really big screw here at the bottom looks like all the clear no these are more oh here are the masts i don't know what those other parts were we'll have to look at those when we get those out of the bag but here are the masts and just a whole bunch of really small fine detail parts like piping and tubing and things like that so we have to be really careful with this one and this final sprue here is the a uh, lot of vent ventilation cowling covers and things like that hopefully you can see that So there's that one. So, we've wrapped up another box here. 
again, everything really, really well packed. Really happy with that. And I'm not having any problem at all getting it all back in there, which is usually not the case. Dropped a couple on the floor here. Let's get these back in there. Close this one up, and we finish everything up here with the uh, with the LED set. Make sure we'll look at that here really quick. How thrilling it'll be to look at a bunch of um, individual LEDs and a roll of LED tape, but we'll just check it out. Okay, this is all in one bag here. I'll go ahead and pop this open here really quick. Get my scissors for that. Okay. So in this foil bag here, obviously we have a roll of warm white LED tape. Um, depending on what I do for the lower section here, I've already been thinking ahead on this a little bit. I may not use this because uh, if I'm going to light up the entire bottom, I want that lighting to match. Uh, uh, so I'll probably just uh, order a couple of new rolls of this stuff from my good friend Jerry at HDA Model Works in the warm white. And that way I know that all my lighting is going to match. This may only be enough to do the upper level of the ship. And if that's the case, if I try to buy another roll of this stuff, uh, it's not the exact shade. Because if you've worked with this LED lighting, you'll know that... Uh, you can get a different batch of this, even though it's the same supposed uh, manufacturer and everything, it's slightly different. And there are many shades of white lighting available. They call it warm white, but I've seen everything from a yellow looking warm white to a kind of a mid to a, you know, I mean, and everything in between. So that's something I'm definitely going to think about. The individual LEDs, it may not matter as much because those are just smaller pinpoints of light. So, uh, you know, I can probably get away with mixing and matching some of those, but... Here we have all the resistors. I'll have to break these down to find out what the actual value of these are. You can do that. I've got a little chart that'll tell me based on these little stripes on the side here. It's not marked at all what they are. Just some wiring. Some sockets that plug in. You have to wire on to more sockets. I guess so you can plug everything together. And again, uh, I wire everything in parallel so it's all you know everything every individual component has its own power source I don't know how they've got you wiring this whether it's in series or whatever it is I'll have to look at that uh, but I never wire any of my models that way because you, know, you can think of a series as a chain and any link in that chain fails or breaks then anything beyond that will no longer function so one little problem at the very beginning of your you know your wiring or something uh, in your you know series type wiring and nothing beyond that point will work so if it's at the very beginning you have basically nothing whereas parallel one little component fails or something like that it's isolated to that spot everything else continues to work it's the way I've done my model since the very beginning and uh, it, it works out really well that way but just we have all these individual LEDs they look to be uh, kind of a kind of special here they're they're the three millimeter or they're actually five millimeter but they have a really blunt short tip on them which is kind of interesting um, I'm sure they're available out there. I'm sure if, you know, anything I need to match up with this, I'll be able to get through Jerry at HD Model Works. He carries just about everything that there is out there for lighting. Here, a little wire harness with a plug, USB, uh, with a switch. So, apparently this model can be battery powered or USB powered. Now, I thought in the, uh, instructions they showed a little battery pack, but this is actually for a USB. So, you'll have to use one of those little USB, um, adapters. You know, for your like you use on your charger for your phone, and that that actually might work out pretty good. I might actually go with something like that. Uh, we'll just have to see. But uh, there's your little harness for that. So let's put all this stuff back. And uh, again, it just remains to be seen about how much of this lighting kit I'll actually use. Uh, when I ordered the kit, there was no mention of the LED lighting kit. I thought they were going to be. Um, two separate kits, you know, one with lighting and one without. I think they kind of changed that at the last minute, but, uh, you know, I got it for the same price I paid for the original kit, so I wasn't complaining. And I can always use whatever I don't use from this on, you know, put it in my stash and use it for something else later on. We'll just have to see. All right, everybody, so we finished looking at the LED set, and now for the final piece, the piece de resistance. We're going to have a look at the, uh, the main hull here. I'm going to go ahead and pop this out of its carton. Really did a nice job packing this in here separately with nice uh, styrofoam supports. 
and this is probably the most important part of the entire kit and I'm sure it's going to be highly scrutinized by a lot of the Titanic experts out there but to me I'm really pleased uh, just having a look at it earlier I think the general shape of the ship looks to be really spot on uh, I'm really pleased with the uh, the shape of the bow here that's one of the things in the, a lot of the Titanic models in my opinion they get wrong you know the actual rake area here the tilt and the way it kind of bows out here in the front are really weird on some of the Titanic models but this looks to be really nice this piece is absolutely like bulletproof I mean it you could use this as a kayak guys this is strong very thick it's beautiful it's been done all in one piece so we don't have to worry about a big seam along the bottom there is a slight mold line here that you're gonna have to remove um, but generally you know and up along the back here below the stern area but generally this is just beautiful I don't see any major flaws on the main areas that we're gonna see here on the ship again here we have all the uh, porthole detail all that's been done so you have a nice spot to start with with your drill work if you're gonna open these up and I'm probably gonna do that uh, that's gonna take quite a bit of time but you know I've done those before so we'll just knock them out one by one there are several different sizes here the nice part is that they're all round uh, besides the uh, main gangway doors here on D deck which this is something that I wanted to point out to everybody on the Titanic itself one of the ways you can tell it apart from the uh, Olympic which which is which was its almost identical sister ship is the Titanic's main gangway doors here uh, had rectangular shaped window cutouts uh, whereas the Olympics were round now they have actually recovered one of these doors from the bottom of the ocean it was actually found on the original wreck open and there's a whole story about whether that door was left open during the sinking and that helped contribute to the sinking and all kinds of stuff all you Titanic buffs out there will know what I'm talking about but over the years the door actually you know rotted you know the hinges rotted away and it fell so they recovered it from the sea bottom and it's been restored and on display in one of the uh, Titanic exhibits somewhere and it's pretty fascinating to see that but uh, so those little windows there we're gonna have to actually drill open and do a little bit of filing work to cut out cut out those uh, rectangular shapes but uh, you know pretty much all the round ports here we're gonna be able to do with uh, just a basic pin vise and a couple different size drill bits so that'll work out pretty good as I mentioned there's a little seam here on the back that'll have to be sanded down now one thing I would have liked to have seen was the original Titanic the word Titanic the name was actually engraved into the hull uh, you know here at the uh, four peak and on the stern uh, and that's why you know there are actually you may or may not know in some of the old Titanic uh, ex, you know exhibition videos at one point I think it was in the mid 90s uh, it might have been on one of the Cameron expeditions or one of them they actually scraped away some of the uh, there's a video of it on YouTube you can check out where they scraped away some of the rusticles and they could clearly see the name Titanic on the side I think on the I think they saw it on the port side uh, and it was really amazing to see that and sure enough it was in, inscribed into the hull the letters were about I can't remember I read somewhere what size they were but they were pretty huge and uh, so they weren't you know placards that fell off or they weren't just painted on so it would have been nice to see those inscribed on here like that you know you would have had to paint those in that would have looked pretty nice you know they're just included in decal form I could see somewhere along the line where some photo etch might come out where you put that plate over the top with those names inscribed on it that would be pretty nice a look, you know it would look a little bit more realistic but um, all the rivet detail is here there are you know literally millions of rivets on this ship uh, not so much on the lower areas but up here around this belt line and everything they're more prominent um, kind of hard to see on the video here the camera won't focus that close but uh, when you get yours you'll see that again there's a little bit of a mold line here around the back the bolt you know the brackets for the bolts for the rudder are really nicely done there's a nice boss here for the center screw and then we have to you know of course attach the uh, the wing propeller mounts and all that but beautifully beautifully done and super sturdy and heavy so that's that guys so we're gonna wrap this up then uh, I'm gonna call a, call an end to the uh, voiceover part of this video here I'm gonna finish up at the end by doing a slideshow of all the individual sprues uh, unpacked from the I got the wrong end here let me switch this around you got to be careful when you're swinging this bad boy around guys you're gonna knock out lights from the ceiling if you're not careful um, I'm gonna put back in here um, the rest of the video will be a slideshow on the uh, individual sprues so you can take your time and kind of look at those in close detail um, and we're gonna wrap this video up
Uh, I'll be back very soon with some more updates on the 72 inch Enterprise and the Viper that I'm working on. I've actually got film in the can on those things. I just got to get it edited and put it out. Uh, thanks, if you, thanks to you guys for kind of being patient with me. I've, it's been a long time in between videos. I've been very busy working on client work here in the shop and also uh, a lot of family stuff that I've been engaged with. And uh, so I've just been a really, really bus busy guy. I, I miss putting out videos and uh, engaging with everybody out there. Thanks again for being a subscriber. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I want to I want to mention a quick shout out here at the end also to the guys over at Titanic Honor and Glory who actually got a nice mention here on the box art, which is really cool. For those of you who are Titanic fans, there's a group out there called Titanic Honor and Glory. They post on YouTube. They're developing a really, really awesome interactive video game based on the Titanic with complete photo, photo reali photorealistic detailed interiors and it's going to end up being some kind of an adventure game. It's been in development for the last couple of years. These guys have done a lot of research. They're a couple of young guys and they really know their Titanic stuff. I've been very impressed with them. I follow them. I've actually contributed to their project. You can find them on YouTube and Facebook. I uh, hope you'll support their project and their efforts out there. But thanks to a lot of their research and some of the people that they work with, famous people that have been involved with the Titanic over the years, Ken Marshall, um, Park Stevenson, some of those people that are out there that are you know absolute Titanic experts, uh, Bill Sauter, some of those guys, they've actually given input on this model, which is, uh, you know, I'm really glad that Trumpeter took the time to listen to those folks and try to make this model right. And from what I'm seeing so far, guys, this model is absolutely fantastic. And it's going to be an absolute museum piece when you finish it. And uh, I think you'll all be really happy with getting this kit. So I, w I will also mention here at the end that... Uh, uh, I've created a new account, uh, same channel name, Trekworks, over at BitChute. Uh, some of you guys out there may have used BitChute, but it's a similar video sharing platform to YouTube. They're kind of starting out. Uh, you know, I just want to, from this point going forward, I want to post a duplicate to every video that I post on YouTube over there. So going forward, if anything happens to YouTube in the future, my videos will, you know, hopefully a lot of my videos will still survive over on BitChute. Uh, you know, YouTube's been going through some changes over the last couple years and we'll just kind of see what direction it's going. I haven't had any problems so far, but we'll just have to see. But in case that does, and then occasionally I may post some unique, uh, you know, model builds or something specific on BitChute only to kind of help attract people over there. If you're a subscriber to my channel, I hope you'll uh, subscribe over there as well. It's absolutely free. As Again, uh, uh, BitChute is set up where you can uh, donate on there. Uh, I have it set up where you can donate to my channel if you'd like over there. Uh, I don't ask that you guys do that, but if you'd like to, I would appreciate it. Uh, I'll always keep my uh, videos and all my things that I do here, my projects, absolutely free for you guys to view, and I appreciate uh, people just as much who don't, do don't donate as who do donate, so I just wanted everybody to know that. I've always been about uh, sharing what I've learned and working on these fun model kits with you guys. That's the reason I started my channel, and that's what I will continue to do. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for all the subscribers, the viewers. Hope you'll hit the like button on this video, and we'll see you next time, everybody. Enjoy the slideshow of the up-close parts detail of the 1-200 scale Titanic. See you again next time, and happy modeling, everyone.